The spring of 2025 marked a turning point in the global technology landscape, a moment when the world's interconnected digital future was suddenly thrown into question. The fracture of the global tech order was not just symbolic, it was immediate and deeply felt across industries, governments, and everyday life. In April, the United States, joined by its closest allies, imposed sweeping technology bans on China, with a particular focus on crippling its semiconductor industry and halting its progress in advanced computing. This was a comprehensive blockade, severing China's access to the world's most advanced chip-making tools, design software, and the expertise needed to innovate at the cutting edge. ASML, the Dutch monopoly on EUV lithography, and TSMC, the world's top chip foundry, were forced to cut all ties with Chinese firms, halting shipments and freezing ongoing projects. The global electronic supply chain was shattered overnight, leaving factories idle and warehouses empty as critical components vanished from the market. The West justified the move as a matter of national security, arguing that unchecked technological growth in China posed risks to both economic stability and military balance. The sanctions escalated a trade dispute into a full-blown technological cold war forcing nations and companies around the globe to pick sides or risk being left behind. Stock prices for Western chip giants like Nvidia and Qualcomm plummeted as they lost access to their largest and fastest growing market, sending shockwaves through the financial world. The era of seamless global tech commerce ended abruptly, replaced by a new age of strategic decoupling, where collaboration gave way to competition and suspicion. The world's technology landscape was now split in two, with digital borders as real and consequential as any physical wall. The Silicon Curtain had fallen, dividing innovation, economies, and the very future of technology itself. China's response was immediate and massive. The sanctions triggered a national drive for semiconductor independence framed as a patriotic mission. Beijing poured hundreds of billions into domestic tech champions from SMIC to Huawei's Hisilicon, and memory makers like YMTC. The goal, replicate the entire semiconductor supply chain within China's borders. Universities launched new programs, and a talent drive lured engineers from abroad and rival nations. The whole nation mobilized state, academia and industry toward breaking the West's technological grip. Engineers worked around the clock, fueled by urgency and nationalism, the sanctions meant to cripple China instead galvanized it. China shifted from catching up to forging its own path. The race for tech supremacy had entered a new, more intense phase. In the face of sweeping sanctions and mounting international pressure, SMIC and Huawei emerged as the vanguard of China's technological defiance. Refusing to be sidelined, they rallied engineers, scientists and resources from across the nation, determined to chart their own course through the blockade. Denied access to cutting-edge EUV machines, SMIC pushed deep ultraviolet lithography beyond what many thought possible. Through relentless experimentation and innovation, they achieved mass production of 7 nanometers chips by late 2025, a milestone that stunned the global tech community and signaled a new era for Chinese semiconductors. While these chips were still less efficient than those produced by TSMC, they were a testament to Chinese ingenuity. Designed by Huawei, these processors powered a new generation of flagship devices, proving that China remained a formidable player in the global tech race. SMIC and Huawei pressed forward, undeterred by technical hurdles. Their next goal to achieve 5 nanometers chips using even more refined DUV techniques, a feat that would have seemed impossible just a few years earlier. Rather than simply copying Western technology, Chinese engineers began to innovate around obstacles, developing unique solutions tailored to their own needs and constraints. At the same time, Huawei accelerated its AI chip development, launching the Ascend series as a powerful domestic alternative to NVIDIA's GPUs. This move was crucial for China's ambitions in artificial intelligence and high-performance computing. These new chips, combined with a rapidly maturing homegrown software ecosystem, enabled China to train and run advanced AI models on its own terms, reducing reliance on foreign technology. The US-led blockade, intended to cripple China's tech industry, instead became a catalyst for rapid adaptation and evolution. Chinese companies learned to thrive under pressure, turning adversity into opportunity. The partnership between SMIC and Huawei grew stronger, forming the backbone of China's semiconductor ecosystem and inspiring a new wave of domestic innovation. Under relentless pressure, China was not just surviving, 
but innovating with a speed and determination that surprised the world. The technological war had forced China to rise to the challenge, forging a new path forward and reshaping the global tech landscape in the process. China's path to self-sufficiency came with major compromises. SMIC's advanced chips were costly and had lower yields than TSMC's, limiting their deployment to key projects. Performance lagged. Chinese chips ran hotter and less efficiently than Western counterparts. The gap was most evident in high-performance computing and advanced AI. China also faced bottlenecks in ultra-pure materials and high-precision manufacturing tools. Domestic equipment makers made progress but couldn't match global leaders. The Great Wall of Silicon was being built but some bricks were weaker. To leapfrog the West, China invested in radical new technologies like laser-induced plasma lithography. These were high-risk, high-reward bets. China knew it couldn't just follow, it had to innovate. True leadership would require breaking the mold, not just catching up. The April 2025 sanctions backfired in unexpected ways. Western tech giants like NVIDIA, ASML and TSMC lost billions as the Chinese market vanished. The sanctions created a protected space for Chinese firms to grow without Western competition. SMIC and Huawei now had a captive market of 1.4 billion people to refine their products. Western firms lost access to Chinese data and scale, slowing their own innovation. The policy forced China to build a resilient, vertically integrated tech ecosystem. What was meant to cripple China instead made it stronger and more self-sufficient. The West's attempt to maintain dominance had created a formidable rival. The technological balance of power was shifting. With a viable domestic chip industry, China built a parallel tech ecosystem and led a new non-Western bloc. Belt and Road Nations became the first customers, offered a full Chinese tech stack from 5G to AI, free from Western influence. Huawei spearheaded this push, building AI infrastructure and smart cities for partner countries. Adopting China's technology meant joining its digital orbit. The world split into two incompatible tech standards, hardware, software, and even internet governance diverged. The West promoted an open internet. China championed digital sovereignty and state control. Companies now had to navigate two sets of standards and laws, designing products for each block. The seamless global digital village was gone, replaced by digital borders and firewalls. The world faced two competing digital empires. The age of a single, interconnected tech world was over. The 2025 semiconductor split marked a dramatic turning point in the global power struggle, sending shockwaves through governments, industries, and markets worldwide. What began as a trade dispute quickly escalated into a technological arms race, with nations scrambling to secure their own supply chains and protect their strategic interests. Two technological blocs, one led by the US, the other by China, now define international relations. The world is increasingly divided as countries are pressured to align with one side or the other, reshaping alliances and economic partnerships. Technology underpins both economic and military strength. The chip war set the stage for a new kind of cold war, where control over microchips means control over the future. Nations are investing billions to outpace their rivals in innovation and production. Eurasian alliances have coalesced around China and Russia, while the US has strengthened its ties in the Indo-Pacific and Europe. New regional partnerships are emerging, and old alliances are being tested as the world adapts to this new reality. The race for dominance in semiconductors, artificial intelligence and quantum computing is now central to global rivalry. These technologies are not just tools, they are the foundation of economic prosperity and national security. Every nanometer milestone and every AI breakthrough is a move on the geopolitical chessboard, with each advance shifting the balance of power. The stakes have never been higher and the competition is relentless. Innovation is accelerating at an unprecedented pace, but so is the risk of conflict. The world watches as tensions rise knowing that a single misstep could have global consequences. The unipolar era is over. Two superpowers with competing technological systems now shape the world. Their rivalry is redefining everything from supply chains to standards and influencing the daily lives of billions. The future will be decided not just in treaties or summits, but in the intricate patterns etched onto silicon wafers, where science, strategy and ambition converge. The chip war will define the balance of power for decades to come, shaping the destiny of nations and the course of history itself.